Alright guys, welcome back again. Today's topic is about differentiability. Okay, before I go ahead with the topic differentiality, I hope all of you have gone through the topic limits from your class 11 textbook. If you haven't, please go through. Alright, so let us start with topic differentiability then. So it's given that suppose f is a real function and c is a point on its domain then the derivative of f at c is defined by limit h tends to 0 f of c plus f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h so this holding limit of h tends to 0 f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h is nothing more than your first principle which you have studied in class 11 okay provided this limit exists so the derivative of f at c is denoted by f dash c or d by dx of f of c so that's the function at point x is defined by again the same thing Instead of C, I got a point X now, so you can just say C over there. So if you go just go down, it's given that the process of finding the derivative of a function is called differentiation. Uh, over here, I'm not elaborating much. Why? Because this differentiability is very much important. Our main focus is to find differentiation, which is nothing more than by d by dx, which we are going to do in exercise 5.2. All right. So before we go for the exercise, there are some terms which you have to go through the proof part you just go through your textbook you'll get it over there the statement i have already written over here the first one is given that if a function f is differentiable at a point c then it's also continuous at that point in short the same thing applies with the next theorem is given that every differential function is continuous but every continuous function need not be differentiable these two theorem correlate to one another so you don't have to much worry about it but just simply go through okay okay then the next thing which comes is about your formula the formula that you, we all have studied in class 11 again that's nothing more than the fun derivative of some function which is popping out at the video the first one is d by dx of x to the power n is nothing more than nx n minus 1 and then goes on uh, i hope you are clear with the formula also all right same thing go with the formula for the product rule and the quotient rule and let us start the exercise then all right, let us begin the exercise. Exercise 5.2 is given the differentiated function with respect to x in exercise 1 to 8. If you can look at the question, I have underlined the word with respect to x. So what do you mean by differentiated function with respect to x? It means nothing more than d by dx. If the question would have come with respect to y, I should have done here d by dy. I hope you clear it there. Okay, question number 1 is given that sine x square plus 5. So let me just say that let y is equal to sine x square plus 5 so differentiating both side with respect to x we get so if i differentiate both sides with respect to x i'll get here dy by dx is equal to d by dx of sine x square plus 5 all right now i want you to uh, consider this whole thing nothing more than to be your x just imagine it your mind so d by dx of sin x what's the answer of d by dx of sin x is nothing more than your cos x i'm just cons told you to cons imagine this one to be your x right so d by dx of sin x happens to be how much cos x but is this x no, we are just imagining it. So we have to differentiate once again. So d by dx, x square plus 5. So which would be cos x square plus 5. Now d by dx of x square will be how much? 2x. d by dx of 5 will be how much? 0. Now you might be wondering how did I got d by dx of x square to be 2x? Uh, you can just see the formula or you can just look over here. It will be. I'm using this formula d by dx of x to the power n. Your d by dx of x to the power n happens to be nothing more than n x n minus 1. Your n comes down, so it's n minus 1. So what is the power over here? The power over here is 2. So 2 will come down. So 2 minus 1 is how much? 1, which I don't have to write on n. d by dx of 5. So your d by dx of your constant is nothing more than the answer is 0. That's why we got the answer 0. I guess you are clear. So, which is nothing more than I got the answer 2x cos x square plus 5. So, that's the answer for your question number 1. 
All right, let us do question number two in a similar way, just like question number one. Same thing over here will be that y is equal to cos sine x. So it will be uh, differentiating both sides with respect to x. We get, I'll get here first, dy by dx is equal to d by dx of cos of sine x. Just like in the previous one, I have considered or I have imagined the value of x to be x squared plus 5. Over here, I have to imagine the value of x to be this whole thing. That's your sin x. Now, you tell me d by dx of cos x is how much? d by dx of cos x is minus sin x. I'm just imagining this one to be your x, right? This is not x, so I have to differentiate once again. So, which would be minus sin of sin x so d by dx of sin x happens to be your cos x so that's your answer let's do question number four question number four is given to be sec tan root over x so how many terms are there there is nothing more than first one second three there are three terms over here till now we have been doing till two terms right so just like the previous question the same thing i have to differentiate both sides with respect to x so if i differentiate both sides respect to x i will get the next step to be this one dy by dx is equal to d by dx of sec 10 so i have to consider this one the whole thing this whole thing to be nothing more than your x now if I consider this whole thing to be your x, I will get the next step to be d by dx of sec x is how much? Sec x tan x. But this is not x, I am just imagining this one to be x, so I have to differentiate once again. So, the next step would be, now, over here, I have to consider this whole thing. That means I have to imagine this whole thing to be your x now. So if I imagine this one to be x, I will get the next step to be sec 10, 10. So d by dx of 10x is how much? Sec square x. But again, is this x? No, right? So d by dx of root over of x. So which would be sec 10 10, 10 of root over of x, it's x square root over of x. Now, the next step is d by dx of root over x. So that will be d by dx of root over x. It means x to the power 1 by 2. Now, I'll be again clear till there. So, which would be sec 10 root over of x, 10, 10 root over of x, x square root over of x. Now, d by dx of x, how much would that be? It would be 1 by 2, x to the power 1 by 2 minus 1. That's the formula. So, which would be sec 10 root over of x, 10, 10 root over of x. Now, that will be 1 by 2, that will be minus, so it will be root over x. So, that's your answer. Question number 5 is given to be this one if you look over here i got fraction fraction means i have to use the quotient rule okay so uh, again the same thing it will be differentiating both with respect to x we get so if i differentiate both respect to x i'll get here dy by dx is equal to d by dx of sine ax plus b divided by cos cx plus d okay now consider this one to be your x for sine and this one to be your x for cos i hope you're clear till there so if i have to use the quotient rule it will be what cos cx plus d d by dx of sine ax plus b minus sine ax plus b d by dx of cos cx plus d okay divided by 
cos cx plus d the whole thing square that's the formula okay the next step now just like i said i have to consider this one to be your x and for cos this one to be your x same thing i'm going to do it over here so which would be cos cx plus d now d by dx of sin x is how much cos x but is this x no right so i have to differentiate once again similarly for this one i'll just do it over here minus sine ax plus b so d by dx of cos x is how much minus sin x i knew that d by dx of cos x is minus that's why i've given here the bracket okay now you have to differentiate the whole thing does that will be your cos square cx plus d you can pause the video and then see once again the step yeah so the next step would be your cos cx plus d cos ax plus b now d by dx of ax happens to be how much a into 1 plus d by dx of b 0 minus sine ax plus b minus sine cx plus d and then d by dx of cx will be how much c plus 0 divided by cos square cx plus d okay so the next step that will be i'll bring this a in the front so it is a cos ax plus b cos cx plus d minus and minus is plus c sine ax plus b sine cx plus d divided by cos square cx plus d so that's your answer i want you to practice nicely yeah